Welcome back. I was recently contacted by an Amazon seller who asked me to review one of their products and they sent me the link to it. And the product is a scope around focus, which is a Wi-Fi digital microscope. And I thought, yeah, that'd be pretty cool to review, send it my way. And well, a couple days later, here it is. Uh, but the thing is, is, first of all, I was provided this free of charge, so I should mention that. And most of my review videos, I tend to have a giveaway at the end of it. I'm going to apologize in advance and say I don't think I'm going to be giving this one away uh, simply because this is something I think I can actually use here in my lab on the long term use and we'll be able to use for future projects and stuff. So without any delay, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We'll take a look at it together. I have not looked at this yet at all, uh, just briefly online. And of course, it comes in the obligatory Amazon box because that's obviously where it came from. But inside here is this nice little package. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this now. Now it's uh, packed very well, so that's a good thing. And this is actually a really neat device from what I've read. And before I open it up, we'll go ahead and talk about it just a little bit. Now this is an HD camera system. It's actually 720p. And the, the premise of this is, this is the main controller, and this is the actual accessory piece we'll call it there's different accessory pieces available depending on what your needs are but uh, this particular one is a microscope more or less if you look at it you can see there is a base and this is the actual uh, camera itself and then this is the uh, little holder to hold it outward and you can actually put slides on here this is a little backlit section and it's going to look like that when it's put together and of course this is the actual main brain and you can see there's a flexible lead which is kind of like your uh, endoscope and then you also have this one where the camera's at the very end on the right angle and they showed in the demo video online you know somebody was you know looking in their mouth to check their teeth out it was a good example of what you'd use this for and there was another guy who used this on his engine to look for oil leaks and stuff but i'm interested in the microscope part because we should be able to use this here in the lab to actually get up close to different electronics and stuff if we want to read codes or we want to check traces or do anything like that so this is what we're going to open first you see it is the scope around so of course we'll uh, just go ahead and slice this paper open and again you know packaging is pretty nice on this open that up and see and uh, yeah so there is an instruction booklet here we'll take a look at that in a moment and this is this is it there's a uh, USB port in the bottom there's also a USB port at the top so that's how they're connecting the individual leads there's a locking button it looks like and this is the power button now of course this is dead so you know, I I was going to open it up and charge it up ahead of time, but, you know, I figured we'll look at this all together, and I have time to let this charge. We can come back to it a little bit later, but that would plug into the bottom here, and you can charge it. I'm not sure if you can connect via USB, but I know for sure you can definitely charge it, so I'll put that up to the side. Nothing, nothing else in the package here. If you look at the instructions, this just gives you the basics. You can get the scope around app if you want to scan one of those QR codes. It is available for uh, Apple and Android. And you can also get it from the Windows Store as well. And I'll go over all the uh, individual specs as well as they'll be in the description below. We can just briefly look at this. If you want to see any of these panels, I suggest just pausing. Uh, anything on the back? Yeah, there are some specs on the back. Here's the technical data. It's a little hard for me to read this at the angle it's at, so I'll, I have notes already on the side of here. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, anyway, the other device here, the base, we'll check this out. And again, similar packaging. It should just open up. It's kind of reminiscent of an iPhone. So far, it's pretty nice. It's a... Uh, nicely put together here. Now this is the actual camera itself. Very similar to the endoscope I reviewed. It does have a manual focus at the top here and I believe this is lit. I'm not sure if we could see it there or not but this does, this should light up. We have the arm that actually holds this in place. It looks like there's a clip in the bottom here. There's actually, yeah, this is the base in the bottom here. 
this is all this uh, closed cell foam inside here so again nice packaging and these clips are adjustable so if you want to hold something down you can do so this is backlit there is a USB port in the back here so perhaps this could be just powered up via USB this is a locking ring uh, let's see what other little pieces in here this is a little mirror that you would put the camera into here and you can angle out the reflection in, in a few different pieces like that and this is a cone adapter then there's also these guys here, which kind of looks like the thing the doctor would stick in your ear to look in there. I'm sure there's a purpose for that. And that's what you get. So what I have here is uh, some specs I wrote down. Now, again, I mentioned this is an HD camera at 720p. It has uh, ingress protection 67, so that's pretty good. It's waterproof. Uh, it has an operating temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit up to 113, which is 0 degrees Celsius down to 40, uh, up to 45 degrees. And uh, it has 150x zoom manual focus. As mentioned, there's a backlight on that with the clips. There's adjustable fill-in lights on the piece up here. It can do 800 by 600 or 1280 by 720 resolution. It does have a CMOS sensor. Uh, it's embedded Wi-Fi. It's 802.11 BGN up to 300 megabits a second. It runs on Android systems 4.2 and up, Windows uh, XP and up, and iOS 7 and up. And there's also support for Windows Mobile and Mac OS X. This has a 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp battery with a three to four hour maximum battery life. If you want the probe length, this guy here is actually uh, 5.9 inches or 150 millimeters. And the diameter is point. 315 inches or eight millimeters. The shipped weight, everything you saw here in these boxes was 1.3 pounds, so it's very lightweight. They offer a 30 day exchange or one year labor warranty on it. Uh, well, I found a price $299 MSRP. Uh, at the time of this review on Amazon site, they had it listed for $99 which I thought was a pretty good deal. Uh, it does look like quality. You know, we could do a teardown on this, but honestly, I don't see any way of actually getting this apart. It looks like it might be glued together. It's definitely stuck together. Uh, really, only thing that's in this thing is a controller, a Wi-Fi antenna, pretty much, and a battery. Everything else is the camera up here. So let's see how this gets put together. I'm gonna just kind of wing this. There's also, oh yeah, there's a knob down here. So this is probably to adjust the intensity of the base here. Now it looks like this top loosens and the base would go in and we should be able to screw that down to, yep, that secures it. And then there's the little end up here. This just clips in like that. To get that out, you push the button that should release that, yep. And then the actual microscope itself fits in up here. And I don't see any way to tighten it down. It's just friction. And it's got some pretty good friction to it. And then the USB lead just plugs in on top up here. That's pretty simple. I'm just going to borrow the charger and the lead from my Samsung tablet here. It's the same uh, micro USB end. Now the question is, is can you actually operate this while it's charging? So if we plug this in the bottom here, there's no indication on it right now. If I push down the button, hold it on. Okay, we can see there's a little indicator light here. So what we have to do now is get this paired up with uh, some kind of a device. So I have my tablet handy. Let's see if we can get that to happen. I'm gonna let this charge up for a little bit because I think that'd be a good idea. We can actually see here, it does have charge indicator on it. It's got two out of four bars charged basically and it's working on the third one right now. But interestingly, if we look at the bottom of this, you can actually see that this has a battery on its own. So you can actually plug this in, charge this up separately. And as I mentioned, there is a light on here. Uh, just tested this out. You can actually disconnect this and of course take the actual scope base piece out. It still powers up. So that does definitely shows that there is a battery in there. So I thought that was pretty neat. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this charge. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna head over to the Google Play Store because we're gonna need to download an app. Now the app is the Scope Around app. So all you have to do is look for that. And from what I understand, to get this thing set up, you just press and hold this for a couple seconds. It'll power up. And then you go to the app. The app tells you to go to your Wi-Fi settings and you look for the scope around dash and a number SSID basically and 
you connect to it and the password's uh, eight zero. So once you type all that in, we should be able to connect to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little while just to charge up, just to make sure everything is right. Now, once this is done charging, the indicator lights will go out and I remove the power cord. So to turn it back on again, we just press and hold for two seconds and you'll see that the little indicators lights light up. And I've already installed the scope around app on my tablet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And this is going to walk us through how to set this up. So there's two options at the bottom here. Uh, I have a device and have a look. So we're gonna click I have a device. And we have three options, this, the fit, the flexible, and the focus. Obviously this is the focus, so I'm gonna click that. And it tells me to long press the power button for two seconds to turn on the device and make sure the battery's fully charged. Well, we already did all that already, so I'm gonna hit next step. And then it says, please tap your mobile settings Wi-Fi. Wait 10 seconds to start. Find Wi-Fi named scope around dash XXXX. So there'll be a number there, obviously. And then connect, the default password is eight zeros. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We'll just swipe into the top up here and uh, we should see that in this list here. Yep, here it is, scope around 100726 is the number it named it. And I'll just hit show password here so we could see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. Hit connect and it looks like it's obtaining an IP address and it is connected as we can confirm down by the bottom here. So I should be able to now go into that app and it says connected at the bottom here. And if we click that, we should see something here. Now it says, uh, Scope around focus, it's showing an antenna here and it's showing this little preview window. I'm assuming if I click that, it should take us into the actual camera here. There's nothing on it yet. I try uh, increasing the brightness on that light. You can see it is, fl it is flickering, but we're not getting anything on here. I'm just gonna try sticking something underneath there. Oh yeah, we do have that focus, so we can manually focus this in here and hopefully get an image. And the other thing is, is adjusting how far away this is. Something's starting to come up. Yeah, now we do have something there. Uh, now we have to figure out how to actually turn on the lights on that particular unit now there is the backlighting here but we need we need top lighting i know you can't really see it on the camera but there is there is indeed something on there and there we go you can see there's a, a close-up oh that's a little better all right now here's something interesting if you notice this is upside down but it's right side up in the image here so that means i have this backwards which makes sense so we could turn that the right way and now indeed we can slide this in Okay, so that works, that's pretty cool. And we can uh, adjust the focus on this if we want. And it seems like you can actually just grip the top here and adjust that. But I still don't have lighting down on the top there, so I have to see how we can do that. Of course, backlighting doesn't really do me much good. That's better if you have a slide or you know, you're looking through like a, a leaf or something like that. So uh, let's see, now we can take a picture by clicking the picture icon. Or we can take movies by clicking the movie icon and it's going to ask to record audio. Um, I'm assuming there's a microphone built in there if it's asking that. Yeah, it just took me back to my Wi-Fi settings. Yeah, so I have to go through and actually uh, enable the microphone for this to do that. I'm going to take care of that right now. Well, now, sadly, it seems like I'm stuck in a little bit of a loop. I'll show you what's going on here and, and forgive the camera on screen method, but if we go into camera here, it tells me to please enable microphone in your phone settings, application manager, scope around permission, so forth, or hit cancel without recording. So if I hit OK, it brings me into my settings. I can go into general, I can go into application manager, and we can find the scope around app here in alphabetical order. And when you click on that, I don't really have any place to modify that. It already has permission to record the audio, so that's kind of interesting. I'll have to contact the uh, person who, from the company and see if they have any insight as to how we can fix that but we can go back in here we should be able to hit that and hit cancel and start recording without sound which is which is fine um, I'm gonna actually take some video on this and I'll inject it into this actual final video that you'll see on YouTube so you're not gonna actually see the screen footage here I'll, I'll have some real stuff here but we can actually go in and uh, there's a settings well first I'll show you this button up here you can actually mirror the image if you want to uh, see it backwards, that's useful for different things, but uh, we can actually hit this arrow over here and take us back and there's a settings little cog. If we click that, we have a variety of different settings on here. And what's nice is you can actually change the uh, SSID and the password if you'd like. And you also modify the resolution. And I actually bumped this up to the 1280 by 720 resolution from 800 by 600. And it seems like it worked a little bit better. 
Um, so right now the only flub I can kind of find is the fact that we can't enable the audio recording, but that's not really a big deal. I'm assuming that would be useful for somebody who's trying to narrate what they're recording, but you know, I have other ways of doing that. So that's not really a big deal for me. I do want to figure out though how to turn on the lights in this. So I'm going to try to figure that one out right now. Oh, and apparently it was a lot easier than I thought. You just push the power button in and if you push it again, you, in you increase the intensity. And it seems like there's just different steps. So it wasn't that difficult at all. And I have to say, this is getting a little warm, but the other endoscope that I reviewed did the same thing. And that's too expected. There's so many little electronics in this thing. Why wouldn't it get warm is what I'm trying to say. Again, this, this friction fit here is good, but it's a little, a little tight. And perhaps if there was like an adjustment here that you can turn and make this loose, get it where you want and then tighten it down like the base has, that might be a little bit better to me, but not bad. So what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna look around the lab here and find some things to put underneath this and get some good high quality pictures from it to see how well it works for us. Here's a piece I took out of an old MacBook Pro and this is actually the Wi-Fi module. And I was trying to look up the numbers that you can see inscribed on there and it's very small. Even with the magnifying lens, I had a hard time seeing it. I'm trying to figure out some interesting things we can do with this to reuse it. But anyway, let's put that underneath there and find if we can see anything. Now again, I'll have pictures of this, but as we can see, it's a lot clearer. Now the problem is, is that's a that's a metal plate and that plate is gonna reflect any light and there's definitely plenty of light to reflect off of it, but we can adjust that focus just right and we can see in there. Now I've, I've tried turning the light on in that situation and you can see, you get that little halo effect around the edge, but it also reflects off there too much where it just swamps everything out. So it does seem like it adjusts for light levels, which is nice, but we can read that number, BCM 9432US, or actually it's just 322US, I'm sorry. But yeah, that definitely makes it a lot easier to read than trying to use the magnifying lens. And I can turn that around, we can get a really good up close shot of that board. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just set that up. And you can see though, that's one of the connectors for the Wi-Fi connection. And that's with the light turned up all the way on it. So not bad. Uh, if we turn that off, you can see it kind of adjusts a little bit. Sometimes it's better to have no light, you know, but it depends on what you're trying to look at and how reflective it is. And you can see with every light level that I hit it with, it seems to adjust. So all in all, not a bad device. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. So what I'm gonna do now is, is as I mentioned, I'm gonna take a bunch of different stills with this. Maybe I'll take some video with this. We'll put that in and we'll be right back. As you can see, there's no way to actually hone in on what you're looking at. Uh, you may notice that the device I'm trying to view is on an angle here but my picture isn't. That's because I'm able to turn the actual camera to get that right where I want. But there's nothing in this to actually lock it in any one position. So you can't actually know this is the front of the camera unless you put a little mark on it. That would just make it a little bit easier to set up, perhaps if it was keyed so it had to slip in a certain direction. Um, you know, of course, like I said, you can always adjust your adjust your piece like that if you want, and now we know it's it's straight on. But uh, the other thing is, is there's no indication of how far you're actually zoomed in. Uh, it would be nice to have some kind of a readout to say, you know, you're at 1x, 5x, because it goes up to 150x, but we don't know where we are right now compared to what we can go up to. We only know how much we can zoom in and out by how much we can move this. So maybe if it had like little graduations on here, we could see as we pull it in. But I mean, all in all, it's not a bad deal. I mean, you can still get this to where you want. So there's that board set up completely. And I'm going to head and I'm going to hit the record button on this. So I'm recording video with the tablet now as I adjust this. But I should be able to move down into this and I can focus it with each time. Now keep in mind, I do have a very bright LED light shining down on this for my camera. There's also another light on my desk, so it's getting a lot of light surrounding this. With with that, you know, every time I, I block the camera here, it's taking light away from the image for just a moment. So, you know, your, your usage is gonna depend on how much light you have coming in this. The little light here in the camera itself may or may not be enough. Unfortunately, I don't have any slides to put into this to see how it would work as an actual microscope, but for doing this kind of stuff, it's definitely uh, really useful. And once again, we can go ahead and focus that in. Now there is a funky wavy effect that's going on here. I'm not sure what that has to do with the Wi-Fi 
or if it has to do with just the way it translates the video. But we can go ahead and move all that around, focus this in just where we want. I'll even adjust the light level a little bit so we can see how much better or, or, or worse it is. See, it depends. Like right now, I have a dark spot in the middle here and around the outer edges, it's nice. But if I turn the light on, it kind of fills it in just a little bit. Um, adjusting the backlighting in this situation doesn't really do much for that particular picture. Um, one more test I want to do is I'm going to go outside and see if I can find a scraggly leaf lying around and see if we can view something cool with that. And here we have an ordinary leaf just been floating around over the winter outside there. And we should be able to put this in and we can adjust these clips down to hold it in place, which is nice. Of course, we could focus in on that. And the backlighting with this particular leaf doesn't really do a whole lot for us. You can see there is some light coming through it, but perhaps maybe if I zoom in all the way down on this, we can see some of the cell structure as I zoom in and focus. Yeah, it's not really an opaque enough of a leaf for the backlighting, but you can get a pretty good detail on that. Maybe we can turn the light off. Okay, so yeah, we can see the light coming in from behind it now. That's no light, obviously, and this is with light. So in certain situations, you don't want backlighting, you want front lighting, and some you want you want the backlight and you don't want front lighting. So there's your there's your backlighting. And if we turn on front lighting, we can see the front side of the leaf. Pretty neat, guys. Not a bad device for $100. At least that's the going price right now. It's definitely going to be useful for me in the lab here. So again, I'm going to apologize for not making this a giveaway item. It is nice that it is portable. I, uh, this is it. Uh, I did do some playing around. You can charge the base on its own. You can charge this piece on its own. I don't know what the milliamp hour on the base is over the actual main unit. So that'd be nice to find out. But I can't imagine it you know, having a huge battery in it, nor can I imagine it uh, actually dying pretty quick. It's just a couple of LEDs. I don't think this battery will recharge this one, um, and it's certainly a very light device. This has more weight to it, so I'm assuming there's a larger battery in here. Uh, I did try hooking this up to the PC. You don't get anything out of it. It just charges. So to use it on a computer, it seems like you do have to connect via Wi-Fi. With my regular computer that's wired, I couldn't figure out a way to actually do that. And I don't have any iPhone or iPad or any devices like that, so I can't test to see how that works. I'd imagine if I had a laptop to test out, we might be able to connect it that way. Actually, I'm gonna test that out real quick because I do have a laptop here running Linux. Perhaps we can try to get that to work. There's no documentation saying it will work with Linux, but we can try it anyway, right? Well, while I can connect to the Wi-Fi device, this seems like there's no easy device out there to actually connect to it. Um, there are ways of viewing IP based cameras, but you need to know the IP address and you need a username and password. We have an SSID and a password to connect to it, but there's no actual username and password for this device that I could find. So it seems like you do need the app to view it and that just, it does make sense. Uh, but before I'll, I finish this review, I do want to mention the other pieces that came with this. It did come with these different cones here. Now these are to be used like an otoscope, you know, the thing they stick in your ear at the doctor's office to look in there. I'm not going to take a picture of it because it's kind of gross looking in someone's ear, but it does work. I can confirm that. It actually works pretty good with the backlighting on inside of it. And they just slide on and off. The other one is the little mirror. Now I didn't have much luck using the mirror on another device because the mirror ends up reflecting too much of the light and you end up just swamping out the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that one a shot in just a moment. And the other one here is this kind of funnel shaped thing. And this is, you know, meant to get up close and you can't really stick this in anything. So if you're gonna give this to the kids, that's probably the easiest thing to do since it's harder for them to jam this up their nose or their ear. Of course, they can just take the thing off, but I'm, I'm assuming that's what that's meant for. So I'm going to go ahead and just real quickly take a picture of what it looks like with the mirror on it. Now what this does have going for it is, is you have the ability to focus. If you focus the right way, you can see the image that you're trying to look at. If you don't focus the right way, you end up just picking up the reflection of the camera in the mirror. So this is definitely better than the other endoscope that I've used in the past. Uh, of course, you can use it as an endoscope, obviously. I actually had to reverse the image because it actually comes out opposite in the mirror. So that's why that little button is useful. As you can see, we can just reverse that the right way. Now I do have the box that this came in. 
and I could pass this down into it where it's dark and you can see we can't see in there now if I turn the light on and that's when you start to swamp things out that's when you start picking up more of the mirror than anything it depends on where you're going to use that little uh, mirror for it may or may not have the best uses for you but certainly if you're just trying to put it in something where it's already lit like this you could see there's no problems with that I'm just going to go ahead and just snap a picture So what can I add to this? I like this. I think it's a really cool device. It's certainly very useful for a lab situation like we're using here. You can see as we focus in and out that ring disappears. So it depends on what you're looking at and how far away is going to determine how you focus this. So it does take a little while getting used to it, but once you do, it seems like it's a pretty neat device. It'd be nice to get the other attachments and I'm assuming you can get the attachments separately. I know you can get them as sets. And uh, the last thing I'll do is, is we'll pop online and look at the manufacturer's website just to see what that looks like. And as you can see, there are the three different models that they mentioned between the uh, interdental and the endoscope. I do like the endoscope model because it's flexible. The one I have, it's just uh, like, a, like a loose noodle. This thing you can bend. It's got some kind of a, a wire inside of it that you can just bend to whatever shape. But we'll just pan around real quick now there are actually two websites there's scopearound.com and then there's also the geeker website which they have this feature now this sells a bunch of different products but if you go on the scope around site you'll get obviously just their particular products and this is one of these uh, sites you can just scroll through here and look at all the different things but this is pretty neat to check out because uh, you know this is the guy using it to check for leaks in his car and you know, looking for uh, parts in the sink that may be clogged up or looking at flowers or stuff. So there's definitely a lot of cool uses for this thing. Uh, I did see people say it's really cool looking at money underneath this. I haven't done that yet. But we'll, we may play around with that in another thing. Uh, it does last three hours fully charged. May, may, may not have mentioned that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a very cool device for sure. If you want, you can check out the two links here to take you to the actual app. And in their store, they actually do mention the different models. Uh, now, on the Geeker site, they had this listed as being uh, $269. I've seen $299. I've seen $269. They're selling it for $199. But on Amazon, it is $99. See, they have the list price of $299. Um, but actually, on the Scope Around site, you can see they have the other models available. And yes, this does answer the question. You can get the actual individual attachments. And if you really want, you can pick up the whole set, which includes the actual main body with all the uh, accessories, basically, that are available for this, which is nice. And uh, this test long at the bottom, that's actually the company that contacted me. I may contact these people and see if there's anything else they want me to review because it seems like they have some pretty nice products. Uh, this is a Chinese made product, but you know what, honestly that doesn't really make much difference because there are great things that come out of China and there's some not great things that come out of China and that's that goes for any country, you know. Living in the States here, yeah, we have things that are made in America and, you know, most Americans are proud to say made in America, but honestly I picked up some things that were made here that were junk. So it really depends on who the manufacturer is and what kind of level of quality they have, really. And for what I've seen so far with this thing, there seems like there's a good level of quality. Uh, so what I will do is, is at the end of this video stick around you'll see the actual footage that I captured from the uh, Camera itself. I wasn't able to open that up and this particular portion. I'm re-dubbing over I'm, I'm recapturing all the stuff on the screen here as well, so I can Know now that as, as I'm editing this live that I wasn't able to enter that in there is some problem with the file uh, it's an MP4 file format, but it's only like uh, five frames a second, it seems like. So maybe that's the reason why I couldn't open it up with my software. I am using Sony Movie Studio uh, Platinum R13. And uh, I was able to open up the files in the computer, and I can view them, and I had no problem uploading them to YouTube and viewing them on YouTube. I just could not e edit them into this video. So they will be at the end of this. Uh, I'll use the YouTube editor to put that in. And, well, with that, there really isn't much more to say. I do recommend picking up one of these for the lab. It's definitely a very handy unit. Uh, for the money, you're definitely not going to be buying something like you, you'll see here on Amazon. They have, uh, you know, a $500, you know, big microscope. Yeah, that's, that's what you really want if you're doing professional work. But, you know, for the everyday tinkerer, 
I think this is a good deal. I haven't looked at any of these other little cheapy guys, but what I've seen so far with this thing, I'm pretty happy with it. And it seems like it definitely has some very good build quality. So I will, I will leave you guys with that, and we'll see you next video.